Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts families. So, guys, we are not alone. Did you know that, Cindy? Um, well, since I've been with the channel, I'm learning that, no, we're definitely not alone. Well, you've had your own experiences as well prior to us meeting. <laughs> we, don't yeah. have, we don't have to go into big depth here. but Right, right. No, I, I've known we weren't alone since I was a little girl. Um, always had that feeling somebody is watching, staring, and it's caused quite a lot of chaos in my life. And then having people tell me, no, you're not seeing what you're seeing. You're not feeling what you're feeling. That causes a little bit of a disconnect to the brain and the soul. It's not very good for you. So we're talking about a multidimensional reality there. And here, this, this article right here, we are not alone. Confirmation of alien life is imminent and inevitable, researcher claims. And, you know, it goes farther in here, uh, just talking about more along the lines of microbial life and, and discovering that with different probes, you know, likely places being like Europa, um, or, you know, perhaps coming clean on what's, what's really up with Mars as well. You know, the whole idea that space is this empty, incredibly cold vacuum with nothing in it is not accurate. Uh, it's just not accurate at all. It's full of bacteria. It's full of viruses. It's full of uh, a lot of stuff, including the building blocks of life. And uh, the University of Melbourne researcher Cathal O'Connell says discovery of life now seems inevitable and possibly imminent. It seems inevitable that other life is out there, especially considering that life appeared on Earth so soon after the planet was formed. Okay, terraformed, perhaps. You know, I mean, we've we've heard of these builder races, these elder gods, quote unquote, and again. You know, uh, perhaps gods and God have been terms that have been used too much to really um, to really mean exactly what, you know, we would want them to mean. You know, uh, words change, just like we were talking about angel. Angel means messenger, you know, and so everything is just kind of changed. Like Satan, well, Satan means the adversary. So, you know, words change as time goes on and kind of get different meanings. And again, Anunnaki, those from whom the heavens came. And, you know, the fallen ones. Well, yeah, they came out of the sky onto the ground. They are the fallen ones. We could look at it in that sense. We could also, as I was uh, saying in a different video, look at ourselves as being fallen in that we don't realize exactly what we are, you know, and, and who we are. We don't understand really consciousness even on the whole. Most people don't. Uh, they just simply think, you know, this is me. <laughs> this body is me, but the body is not you. Uh, you have a body, but the body is not you. You're something much more than a body. And so this goes on to talk and mostly about microbial life being probably what we're going to find. But when we look over here at RT, we have scientists say that invisible aliens live among us. What? What? <laughs> Did they just say that? Revolutionary discovery or proof that too many useless academics live among us? <laughs> I think I know this guy. He, he looks like a neighbor down the street, doesn't he? Indeed, we do have some pictures and posters of him. Yeah, he, he does look familiar. Um, so the aliens have landed for decades. This belief has been associated with cranks, but now a surprisingly healthy number of university-employed scientists... And researchers are suggesting that aliens live among us on planet Earth. Uh, and, you know, I think that there's always been other intelligences here with us the whole time. And again, I, I view the biblical wording as being ancient wording. And so, you know, it's the wording of the time. So our, our labels and words now, because we have a... Uh, perhaps a little bit more knowledge, especially when we start to look at all the different traditions around the world, you know, can be a, maybe a little bit better descriptive. There's all sorts of life around us in this multiverse. Uh, and just because we can't see them, you know, doesn't mean they're not there as the whole idea of beings being able to manipulate their physiology and change from one dimension into another is gaining uh, credence and perhaps more and more people are coming to believe that as well. You know, obviously 50 years ago, if you asked if there was intelligent life out there, 
most people would say no and to me that is a, a very unenlightened viewpoint uh in this <laughs> incredible expanse of reality you know consciousness is all that there is so you know this is all about consciousness exploring when it gets down to it but we're starting to uncover these things and so each year seems to bring a new subscriber to this steadily growing club with the latest inductee being helen Sharman, first brit in space now at imperial college london's department of chemistry she told the observer aliens exist no two ways about it Uncontroversial enough, you might say, but the OBE, the Order of the British Empire, went on to share her view that aliens could be on Earth right now. Will they be like you and me, made up of carbon and nitrogen? M maybe, maybe not. It's possible they're here right now and we simply can't see them. And uh, she gets into, you know, how basically... We know there's all this missing mass, and they have the theory of dark matter, and now we know that the brain is built to operate on 11 different dimensions that we know of. You know, we are multidimensional beings. We're just starting to realize stuff that the ancients knew, you know, and that was wiped clean because of control, the control grid around this planet by those lovely families that rule everything and have kept us in the dark. And so... You know, Sharman is certainly not alone anymore amongst university scientists and researchers who entertain such beliefs. Back in April of last year, the Oxford student newspaper ran a bizarre interview with Dr. Young Hai Chin of the University of Oxford. In it, Dr. Uh, Chi, I should say, Dr. Chi, an interesting name, Chi, Life Force, as Sassy's having a dream down there. In it, Dr. Chi revealed that he believes not only in invisible aliens living here on Earth, but in the theory that they're interbreeding with humans in order to create a hybrid species capable of surviving the effects of climate change. Wow, that's a big one. David Icke, you are not alone. And uh, yeah, as I shared, I, 30 years ago, I read a David Icke book and I thought it was fun and fabulous and interesting and I thought he was crazy. And after 30 years of research, I no longer think he's crazy. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think this thought of beings that can shapeshift and phase in and out of our reality is very realistic. And after experiencing things firsthand myself on multiple occasions, uh, I'm convinced because, you know, once you have a firsthand experience yourself and then if it gets duplicated... Well, that's a scientific, you know, law, isn't it? You have to be able to replicate something, and when you do, then you kind of have to acknowledge it. Don't you agree, Cindy? I completely agree with that. That's the fair thing to do. That's the normal thing to do. That's the sane thing to do. And they've kept us in this bubble of complete insanity by telling us that these things don't exist and then trying to convince us with all this silly science stuff. Um yeah, you know, there, there's definitely a lot here. So in 2018, Dr. Gabriel de la Torre, Torre of the University of Cadiz published a paper in which he proposed that aliens might be living in the dark matter, which pervades the entire universe, including Earth, but which is unobservable. He explained what we are trying to do with this different uh, differentiation is to contemplate other possibilities. For example, beings of dimensions that our mind just can't grasp or intelligences based on dark matter, or energy forms, which make up almost 95% of the universe, and which we are only beginning to, to glimpse. And, you know, 95% of the universe we can't see, you know? So we're kind of limited in our vision. And if we could only, you know, conceptualize that which we could actually see with our own visible eyes, then we're missing 95% of everything, guys. So he's not the only scientist who suspects invisible aliens may inhabit dark matter. In 2016, Dr. Caleb Scharf of Columbia's University Astrobiology Center wrote an article proposing that dark matter is where all the technologically advanced life ends up or where most life has already been. Others, however, have suggested that undetectable aliens might uh, represent an alternative shadow form of microbial life. So, you know, that's what another bunch of um, researchers, <laughs> that's cute, uh, 
uh, have said. And so, you know, it's growing. We're, we're recognizing this. And so here you see on the conversation, could invisible aliens really exist amongst us? And this gets into, you know, talking about it but with this astrobiologist. And that's what we're talking about. There's been so many documented cases of alien abductions, close encounters of the fourth kind, and, you know, all different sorts. There are so many legends of beings that are sometimes visible in our regular world here, you know, such as the fairy folk, the we people. When I got to North Carolina mountains, I was surprised to see that, you know, most of the locals believed in them and and actually had interactions so many people had interactions with the wee people you know not just over in ireland and scotland but you know here in in the appalachians uh you know the the cases of people running into these beings which were obviously you know again beings that perhaps are normally on a slightly higher vibrational scale than us but at times if our vibration gets high enough our consciousness is in a certain frame of being, a certain wavelength, then we could see them, or perhaps if they're lowered a, a little bit, they could see us, we could see them. You know, it's really fascinating to think of. And here we have the dark connection between UFOs and grisly mutilations, which, you know, we've, most of us, I think, that are watching this channel and channels like it have heard about the cattle mutilations and things like that which gets pretty scary, you know, and, and creepy. And uh, if they could, you know, just basically do experiments and kill animals, you know, I wonder if that's the case with humans. And somebody on one of the last videos brought up Missing 411, right? Is Missing 411? Yeah, with uh, David Pilates. He has some really interesting work that I'd like to do a little bit of research on because people disappear in, in like the national forests and it goes unreported and the, the way they disappear is super super strange because normally like if, if they were taken or if there was a, a problem with an animal you're, you're going to find some sort of sign there's going to be broken branches you know uh, blood something but these people simply vanish and then strangely enough with most of them right after they vanish a storm comes in and it's just all so so strange sweeps away whatever there was there not a trace and you know there have been many military investigations into ufos and and they're letting it on now you know they're letting us know more and more about it the navy has said you know we we acknowledge that there's stuff that we videotaped and and we've experienced and we don't we we can't match it um and a lot of these ufos seem to be interdimensional in nature uh not completely physical and there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of documented cases, thousands. And you see here, they're talking about Project Grudge Report number 13. And uh, this is a 600-page document, an Air Force investigation. And, you know, we, we know about Project Blue Book, you know, which ran from 51 to 69. But there's so many other ones out there, and this one was, was looking at um, you know, another mutilated carcass there, and this is in the New Mexican desert, and I, I'll tell you, I experienced some weird things hiking uh, northeast of Santa Fe, and, um, you know, camping out there, most definitely some creepy vibes, you know, I, I do think that there really are these underground bases, I do think that there's non-human entities there, uh, and I and I don't doubt that there are demonic entities because I've met some of those, you know, face to face, uh, multiple occasions. And but not everything is demonic. There's you know not everything is demonic. Yeah, you know, there's all different types of beings out there. Yeah, you know, there's countless life forms out there. And as we we're saying, the Vedas and the uh, Puranas, the Hindu holy books, they talk all about it. And they talk about hundreds of thousands of different types of humanoid species in the galaxy. You know, somehow they knew this. I think it's passed on knowledge from the uh, civilizations that are no longer with us, truthfully. So, you know, there's case after case after case, uh, abductions, experiments going on. We were talking about, you know, are we truly living in an alien ant farm? 
Well, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you should have no other gods beside me. That kind of says there's other gods, you know, and, and sons of the gods. Well, who are the sons of the gods and, and creating hybrids? You know, George Adamski did a lot of um, UFO study. And <clears throat> check out this cigar-shaped craft that's supposed to be a Venusian interplanetary car uh, carrier. I think we have a lot of misinfo, too. I don't believe that, you know, we, if we're, we're told that Venus is extremely hot acid rain instead of, you know, water rain. And perhaps and perhaps not. But then again... If, if a planet is not able to sustain life in the 3D, it might be able to sustain it in 4 or 5 or 6 or a different type of density. So it doesn't mean that there's nothing there necessarily. And, and we don't really know the true story because they're keeping us, you know, under their own little looking glass. And so, you know, he did so much work. There's, there's an overwhelming amount of, of evidence when we start looking at it, that we've never been alone, never, never, never been alone. And perhaps, you know, there was, was very advanced uh, life here on Earth well before any of our, you know, Homo sapiens sapiens were walking the planet, be it that we were walking the planet 6,000 years ago or, or 200, 300 million years ago. As you know, I I don't know the timelines now at all. I mean, everything is just so scrambled, apparently on purpose as well. And uh, you know, is there life out there? Oh, sure. And I feel like they've been here the whole time. That's my particular feeling. And talking to a lot of Native Americans, that's that's what they believe uh that they've always been here they just know it and there there is inner earth uh culture civilizations as well agartha shambhala shangri-la i think that's a reality as well perhaps telos we felt some interesting energies up that way as well oh we did that was really enjoyable i'd love to go back up sometime this summer spring maybe yeah most definitely we'll be back up there in the summer so my friends thank you so much for your support on patreon and ko-fi uh, it keeps the channel going in these times. Go ahead and share. Share your comments, your thoughts, your ideas, and give us other things that you want to see us cover. And we love to do the research. As always, my friends, keep your eyes to the sky. Namaste. Namaste.